Welcome to the third episode of the second season of the Expert Talks on Teacher Education in Germany. I sincerely wish you all the best for 2023 and I hope we have fun discussing and listening to the topic of teacher education today and in the following episodes this year. Today, for the first time, we are approaching the topic of teacher education from a more international perspective under the headline, Teacher Education Meeting the Challenge of Quality Preparation and Teacher Shortages. Today, we invited it as our speaker, Gerald Letendre from the Pennsylvania State University in the USA. As our critical friend is on board, Joanna Madalinska Michalak from the University of Warsaw in Poland. And our representative of the next generation is Jakob Kost, University of Toronto, Canada and University of Education Bern in Switzerland. I know the colleagues from international discussions and corporations, and we are pleased that all of three of them agreed to appear here in our German context when we asked last year to broaden our perspective a little. We are looking forward to the evening together. I will briefly introduce each teacher before their contribution, and I will start with Jerry Letendre. So, Jerry, for your short bio, Jerry Letendre is uh, the Harry Lawrence Bachelor Second Chair of Educational Administration at the Pennsylvania State University. He served as a, a edit, editor of the American Journal of Education from 2008 to 2018 was head of the Department of Education Policy Studies in Penn State from 2008 to 2016. He has examined teacher work roles, teacher-related policies and issues of quality in books, such as the Rodledge Handbook of Teacher Quality and Policy and Improving Teacher Quality, the U.S. Teacher Workforce and Global Context. His recent work focuses on the effect of globalization and, and, um, and uh, especially information technology on teacher work roles. So Jerry, it's your floor. Please start with your presentation. Great, vielen Dank, uh, liebe Herr Germann. Uh, Ein Moment. Okay, it's fine. Is that good? Yeah, good. Yeah. And I will so, interrupt you at 25, after 25 minutes. Now you have 30 minutes. Okay, very good. Uh, so, uh, erst meine liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, Grüße aus Pennsylvania in den Vereinigten Staaten. Uh, hier, es ist Mittag, und das Wetter ist klar, kalt, aber kein Schnee. Es ist mir eine Freude, an dieser internationalen Forschungsdiskussion teilzunehmen. Aber leider ist mein Deutsch ziemlich schlecht und ich muss auf Englisch präsentieren. So today I will talk to you about teacher shortages, teacher policy and transforming teacher education. Uh, teacher shortages have placed pressures on national governments to reform teacher education and large agencies like UNESCO are producing a global discourse that focuses on the teacher shortage and a crisis in the profession. But these policy discourses often ignore the different causes and the nature of teacher shortages within nations. And nations themselves often fail to enact consistent policies that can effectively support teacher education and long-term teacher professional development. I propose that we as researchers need to consider new ideas about how to transform systems of teacher education. So I will present my talk in three stages. The first will be an overview of the uh, global discourse on shortages and crises. In the second part, I will use examples from the US to show how teacher shortages must be understood in terms of unique national circumstances and how policies can undermine teacher professional development. I'll argue that while there's been growing cross-national agreement on what is effective teacher education, there is not agreement on what effective policies are. 
Uh, and finally, in the third part of the talk, I will use the example of ISTEP. That's the inquiry into the Stanford Teacher Education Program Institute to argue about how we can think about uh, transforming teacher education. Uh, in the call for this series of talks, uh, I was asked to be provocative. So I want to provoke us to think differently about how we think about teacher education research and how that needs to be communicated. And I will use ISTEP, which is currently in use in Norway, Sweden, Hungary, Brazil, and Chile, uh, as an example of a reform that transforms education and also reimagines the profession as a collaborative one that employs community of practice. Okay, so as everyone knows, the media is very worried about a global teaching shortage. Uh, Germany, 40,000 teachers, catastrophe in England. Uh, and Le Monde writes, teacher recruitment crisis is a problem in almost all of Europe. Um, and these teacher shortages have placed pressure on national governments uh, to reform teacher education. But these global calls often ignore the different causes and nature of teacher shortages and fail to consider how policy can effectively shape teacher education. As researchers, we must account for the impact these media and policy discourses have. They can oversimplify very complex problems, making it more difficult for us to put forward empirically based solutions. So let's look at some of these policy perspectives. The global media suggests there's widespread difficulty in recruiting teachers around the world. Many of those media studies cite UNESCO's recent document on the current status of teachers. I was fortunate enough to be at UNESCO in Paris last year for World Teachers Day. And indeed, many of the speeches echoed the sentiments of the director general here. There's a lack of training, unattractive working conditions, and inadequate funding, which are all undermining the teaching profession and aggravating a global learning crisis. At that World Teachers Day meeting, there was a sense that teachers worldwide have been stressed by COVID-19 and that the pandemic has worsened the issues facing the profession. So this discourse of a crisis in the profession, all these shortages suggest there may be a global trend. And some indeed argue that the teaching profession is facing a global crisis. But while the narrative of crisis expands our view and asks us to consider more broadly the potential causes and the solutions, it also homogenizes and may ignore important national differences. So in this talk, I want to think about this crisis both in terms of a global uh, set of conditions, but also in terms of national uh, specifics and national policies. So first, let's take a look at what uh, these big international organizations are proposing. So UNESCO advocates, of course, that we should improve the status and social standing of the teaching profession. And it has already issued sets of policy recommendation based on their own data analysis. Um, and they call on nations to implement these policies, particularly ones that expand and support the teaching profession. Uh, and while a lot of attention is paid to specific issues, perhaps, uh, especially, say, gender equality, um, I find that the call uh, from these agencies often lacks a careful analysis of the existing policies and the existing relationships between various stakeholders. In other words, people who have a political interest in teacher education. Uh, and UNESCO also fails to address the problem or the issue of consistency or coherence in national policies. If we turn to another major international organization, Education International, which is the organization that represents national teacher unions, they also suggest there is a global crisis in the profession. 
Their 2021 publication on the status of teachers and the teaching professions points to many of the same issues as identified by the UNESCO report. As you can see here, teacher pay is low, infrastructure is deteriorating, there's been an intensification of workload, and teacher attrition is at all-time high. Um, they also point to some certain specific policies, such as casual and short-term contracts, which tend to undermine the status of the profession. And they note that uh, continuous professional development remains insufficient. They say that in many countries, policy settings have been designed to make teachers and schools accountable for a range of measures while at the same time promoting competition between schools. What motivates policy is saving money or redirecting money from schools and classrooms. So Education International takes a little more nuanced view and suggests that while policy is important, policy may also be sometimes negative or indeed part of the problem. So let's get specific. And I want to share with you a few slides um, from the United States. Uh, if you have specific questions about the methodology, I will uh, answer them in the breakout session. But let's just think about how is a teacher shortage defined? So this image is from a recent paper by Wynne, Lamb, and Bruno uh, that was published uh, this year, uh, last year. Uh, and it says a teacher shortage can be one, when teaching positions are unfilled, two, when teaching positions are filled by people who have provisional, temporary, or emergency certification, and three, when teaching professions are filled by folks who are certified to teach in some other area than what they're actually teaching. So what they've done here is they have calculated um, whether or not uh, the teachers who are in the position are actually qualified or certified to teach the students they're teaching. In other words, they're not looking at teacher shortage as a number of open or unfilled jobs, but what percentage of the teachers really aren't the best to be there. They aren't specifically trained. They have emergency uh, qualifications. Um, and as you can see, it varies wildly across the United States. Uh, with those countries in the dark blue being in the fourth quartile of percentages of teachers. So, for example, um, in New Hampshire, uh, about 350 positions for every 10,000 students are taught by some teacher who doesn't really have the qualifications to teach. Uh, so, within each state, we get very different uh, conditions around this teacher shortage and its impact on students. But if you think about the US, to further complicate matters, you have to also think about racial and ethnic balances. As a multiracial society, we have an ongoing problem where our teaching force is much whiter uh, than the school age population. Uh, and some research suggests that there are higher attrition rates for teachers of color, making it more difficult for different school districts to diversify their teaching staff. Uh, here are some of the specific uh, conditions to teachers of color that were identified in a research, uh, a recent research report. And again, it shows how difficult it is to think about um, uh, or how one needs to be very careful when thinking about global conditions to remember these specific national conditions and how these can affect the way people think about shortages and the policy solutions that they are going to implement. And to give you some example of this inconsistency, I've created this table. Um, in the United States, uh, the different states often engage in policy making, uh, especially creating emergency credentials that allow school administrators to fill these empty teacher positions. But they've also tried to promote teacher leadership as a way to increase retention among experienced teachers and to provide better mentoring uh, for young teachers and thereby reduce attrition. These policies were instituted over the last 20 years, but they've been highly inconsistent. 
So I used a database of teacher certification standards and state reciprocal agreements and coded state standards to identify the different models of teacher professional trajectories that states have. And I compared this data with National Council on Teaching Quality data uh, about what kind of information the states are collecting. Uh, and I tried to ascertain whether or not the policies of the states were consistent with the kind of data and the kind of goals they were setting. And as you can see here, the majority of states do not have consistent policies on how they use uh, their uh, teacher leadership and teacher recruitment strategies to address the teacher shortage. And if that weren't complex enough, another aspect we must consider is that in a country like the United States, we have many different teacher education providers. Uh, sometimes called IHE or institutions of higher education. Um, and as my colleague Jenny Whitcomb has pointed out in one of her works, even within a single state like the state of Colorado, um, different teacher education programs may have different emphasis on the core competencies of teachers. What this chart here shows that is that in 2016, the major types of teacher education programs that were being carried out. So the white dots are what most people would think of as a traditional teacher education college, a Bachelor of Arts at a four-year college in education. But as you can see in some states, uh, like here in Indiana, it's almost all alternative or traditional and alternative. And in some, there are a lot that are alternative, but not based in colleges of education. So again, this adds to the policy complexity and the difficulty to create a uniform national policy or set of policies that promote consistent quality and support for teacher education. And of course, this derives from the fact that our constitution makes no mention of schooling and all rights to schooling are reserved to states, resulting in a highly complex, decentralized and inconsistent set of policies, which states use to try and address these teacher shortages, but which may in many cases actually undermine the quality of teaching. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about these inconsistent policies. So these efforts to characterize a national teacher supply or a nationwide teaching shortage, as I've said, obscure considerable nuance and may confuse discussions. But it's quite clear that shortages have a major impact on teacher education and professional development, often resulting in policies that lower requirements, emergency credentials, or we call them backdoor credentials. Uh, that allow untrained, uncertified, or certified in other field teachers to enter uh, and teach a class. And while there's been growing consensus on what effective teacher education look like, uh, the U.S., along with many other nations, has failed to enact coherent teacher education policy. Uh, again, to repeat and to focus on the impact of these shortages on quality, here in the United States, what we see is that uh, long-term substitutes who are not certified in the field may teach. Uh, indeed, here in Pennsylvania, schools actually have a shortages of substitutes. So there's a shortage of certified teachers and there's a shortage of uncertified teachers. Uh, the state has created emergency credentials so that teachers can move from other fields, the so-called lateral entry. Um, but it doesn't really support or provide the training teachers may need. Other ways that the shortage affects quality is that class sizes are increased when students are shifted out of a classroom and doubled up. Uh, in some of the rural districts I know here, uh, non-required subjects simply go untaught. Uh, for example, second languages. And again, as I've said before, already underrepresented racial or ethnic or linguistic groups may be further discouraged from entering teaching facing these severe conditions. So what can we agree on in terms of policy considerations? As I said, there's a lot of consensus about effective teacher education growing in the world. 
Um, in some research that my colleague Alex Weissman and I did, we did find some consensus on the broad outlines around uh, teacher education or teacher-focused policy. For example, national conditions do set the context for reform, and national stability and poverty are major factors. We also found that inequality, irregardless of national level of polity, is the major factor that drives the quality of schooling and the ability of schooling to attack uh, schools to attract good teachers. We also found that national policymakers routinely turn to teacher-focused policies as major levers or major ways they can shape their national education system. Uh, however, in the vast majority of countries, teachers remain excluded from the policy generating process. And to get a sort of image of what coherency would look like, I draw upon this chart uh, that my colleague Motoko Akiba and I created um, uh, many years ago. Um, as I said, in the U.S., the decentralized nature of state policy makes it hard to create a national vision for teaching. Um, but this level of coordination among national, state, and local stakeholders uh, plagues many countries. Um, because of a lack of coherent policy linkages, um, few nations are able to approach teacher-focused policy in a coherent manner. Few nations coordinate policy across these basic areas like recruitment, teacher education, um, and uh, hiring qualified candidates. Um, so for those of us in teacher education, it seems like a natural pipeline, right? Recruitment, teacher education, new teacher induction. But few nations think of policies as a set uh, with a clear vision of what high quality teaching is, uh, and then try to systematically coordinate policy across these various areas. Now, as I said, I'm going to make this provocative statement that there is emerging consensus around principles of powerful teacher education. Uh, and I have listed some here, which draw on the work of Linda Darling Hammond in her powerful teacher education book, but also on the work of Hammerness, Kletty, and others, uh, their recent 2020 paper on opportunities to study, practice, and rehearse teaching in teacher preparation. Um, and here we see uh, some of the major tenets, uh, programmatic uh, coherence and clear vision, integration of scholarship and practice, mutual partnerships between institution of teacher preparation, the IHE, and their schools, uh, a depth and commitment to building equitable and excellent classrooms, and the utilization of multifaceted strong assessment and refinement, uh, and a degree of programmatic coherence within the teacher education program itself. So if we can agree on teacher education, might it be that we could find a way to more effectively cut through this morass of inconsistent policy and transform teacher education? Well, when we attempt to do that, we run into something that looks like the Gordian knot. Uh, you may recall uh, this image of a, a bundle of string all tied together, which represents the Gordian knot. Uh, and indeed, the uh, announcement for this uh, very lecture series uh, pointed to the fact that uh, the problems associated with teacher education are multifaceted, complex, and discussed by actors at very different levels. It does seem like this ball of tangled yarn that you just want to cut through. But there's another way to visualize the Gordian knot, and that is a continuous thread with three loops. And I'm going to argue that it's a more effective or a better way to think about reform if we think about the Gordian knot as three interconnected institutions, higher education, policymakers, and then school level practitioners. And that each of these different groups has their own stakeholder values, what they want to see, what they think, what they want to have happen, and their own sets of data and information that they see as valid knowledge. And that if we want to change the system rather than cutting it apart or trying to pull out one strand or another, we need to think about something that can transform 
the relationship of the three together. And so this is why I'm going to argue for something that I call a catalyst for transformation as opposed to a reform. Uh, my colleagues and I uh, have a book coming out in which we argue that to effect real change, an effective change for teacher education, that these disparate stakeholder institutions require a catalyst that initiates and stimulates change across the institutions. In other words, following Rogers' diffusion of innovation, it has to be something that's uh, visible and uh, that uh, uh, is doable and accessible. And following Hattie's ideas of visible teacher learning, it has to be something that the teachers themselves buy into and see uh, some uh, benefit from. This catalyst, just like in a chemical reaction, has to stimulate then intervention or innovation. It can't just be a program that comes in and spreads. It has to be something that embeds and changes. And this means that it needs to be supported by a well-developed theoretical framework, uh, something that can be adjusted to the specifics of the context. Um, and to further accelerate the change process, it needs to incorporate ongoing modification of the intervention. And of course, that was very much not the idea of many intervention uh, scientists who wanted fidelity to the intervention. I'm arguing the exact opposite, that these catalysts for transformation have to change as they change the stakeholders' interrelationships. And that this catalyst can then provide stakeholders with a coherent or common vision of schools, uh, goals or for schools based on the effective principles of teacher education. Uh, and then instigate change in those three areas. So I am going to use ISTEP Institute uh, as a example of this catalyst. Um, so the ISTEP is uh, something that was created at Stanford. It's different from the Stanford Teacher Education Program. Uh, it is an international uh, institute that has been going on uh, for a number of years, um, and it creates these uh, robust uh, communities of practices across uh, national lines that have shown some preliminary uh, success, I think a fairly um, remarkable success across different nations in transforming teacher education. It employs a curriculum that requires teachers to demonstrate practice, in other words, to do theoretically informed instructional practice. It establishes virtual communities of teachers and scholars who focus on institutional relationships, and it encourages a commitment to build an equitable and excellent classroom environment for all children. In other words, as a catalyst, it provides norms and new um, modes of operation uh, that allow the various partners to take more equal uh, seats at the table, to present the knowledge that they find important, and to present the problems they find important, and come up with more um, mutually agreed upon ways of solving the problems. So the substance of the work is grounded in empirically supported research, it's a high quality professional program, but it depends upon these ongoing meaningful human connections that are developed in the Institute over time. Now, um, in conclusion, as I say, I've only got about four minutes left. Very good. Yeah, four minutes left. Thank you. I am not arguing that ISTEP is the single best way to transfer teacher education. You and I, my esteemed audience, we know there are dozens, if not hundreds, of very good empirically substantiated classroom interventions or programs that improve the quality of instruction. What I'm arguing is that the experience of ISTEP as it's been transmitted across these national lines, as it's uh, being taken up in Norway, in Chile, in Brazil, uh, in Sweden, and in Hungary, and in other countries, it gives us insight into how effective transformation of teacher education needs to occur and what 
a program or an intervention needs to have in order to become a catalyst. And so I'm going to argue that, uh, as we will argue in our book, that some of these key features of this catalyst are uh, what you see here on the screen. That it has to combine research on effective teacher education with practices, identified practices that ex impact the existing institutional relationships. Those may be the three I outlined, or in other nations, there may be other stakeholders, other institutional relations that need to be integrated. The catalyst has to, though, focus on reconfiguring the normative views of the key institutional actors, how they see each other, and develop collaborative research-based communities of practice. And uh, for myself and here in the United States, I think one of the critical aspects of this is that we as academics have to value and give more space to teacher-generated knowledge and teacher-generated inquiry. Uh, we cannot withdraw to our ivory towers and say, well, here is the problem and here is how we think it should be solved. There has to be a collaborative and mutual respect for the various types of knowledge, conditions, and exigencies that the various stakeholders have. Of course, at all levels and for all stakeholders, the application and testing of existing theories is critical. Um, we cannot be simply swept up by media discourses or, or even policy discourses. As academics, we must push for this testing uh, and empirical evidence. Um, but we can do that within a research paradigm and within research groups that focus on the problems of equitable school level practice. And here again, uh, in the ISTEP Institute, there is a very strong focus on this normative understanding that all children should receive equitable access to learning materials and equitable access to success in schools. So, thank you very much for your kind attention. I am sorry that I went over these slides so quickly. I am very um, in awe of the ability of everyone here to address these matters in what is probably their second, third, or even fourth language. Um, and uh, I am sorry that I could not address you in German, but I think you would be grateful not to hear my poor German. I will, however, be happy to follow up with anyone who has questions or would like uh, access to the uh, studies I've mentioned. Please email me here at this address. Vielen Dank. Thank you, Dr. Gammon. Thank you all. Jerry, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for uh, that we can learn something new about narratives of crisis and, and the transfer of problems and so on. Thank you very much. Now I will introduce uh, Joanna Madalinskaya Michalak. Joanna is a full professor of social sciences in education and education research. She is based at the Faculty of Education in University of Warsaw in Poland. In 2020, she was awarded to the honorary of title of the Distinguished Professor of, at the University of Warsaw. Joanna's research work focuses on educational leadership, school development, teacher education, and teachers' competences. She is an author of more than 250 scientific publications and is actively involved in many national and international research projects. Joanna was a vice president of World Education Research Association, the VIRA, somebody knows, from 2018 to 2022, and a president of the Polish Educational Research Association from 2014 to 2019. And now he was chair uh, of teacher education policy in Europe in this network, scientific network. She's since 2017 a member of the executive body of the Board of Scientific Association at the Polish Academic of Science. So, uh, Joanna, thank you very much for coming. Please open your microphone and show us your uh slides thank you very much for coming thank you very much axel for this uh, very kind uh, invitation and uh, 
it's an honor to contribute to this uh, session as a critical friend. So, What I uh, found especially interesting in uh, Jerry's presentation uh, is, uh, you know, this uh, the question about the causes and nature of teacher shortages and uh, how we can think about the policy influence on uh, shaping teacher education and professional development of teachers. And uh, in Jerry's presentation, we Mm, among different arguments, one for me was very inspiring that while there has been a growing cross-national consensus on what is effective teacher education based on empirical evidence, the empirical evidence on effective policies is not clear. And I think that uh, this argument really needs uh, consideration and discussion. And another um, argument uh, that I didn't put uh, at the slide, but uh, the issue of the catalyst and how we can see the role of uh, higher education institution, especially uh, teacher education institution uh, in, in the field of, uh, let me say, transforming teacher education, I think it was very ins uh, inspiring for, for us. Maybe you notice that uh, one of the starting points for Jerry's this, um, presentation was uh, the UNESCO goal of recasting teaching as a collaborative profession and reimagine professional development that employs communities of practice, mentorship programs, and peer-to-peer -peer learning. And I think that and this starting point uh, also can open the discussion about the issue, how we can see uh, teaching as a profession, what is uh, important for this uh, profession. And uh, what I found also very important in uh, Jerry's present presentation was this, uh, you know, his perspective on the global discourse on teacher shortages, uh, and the crisis uh, in mm, profession and, uh, you know, the crisis usually ignores national variation. So mm, now when we try to discuss teacher educa education, uh, we see this mm, global perspectives, but sometimes we don't look enough at the national variation and context matters. So if you would like to rethink teacher education, we should mm, take both stances. It means that we should look from the global and from national perspectives. And moreover, despite a consensus around the necessity for quality teacher education, national teacher policy recommendation remain inconsistent. And uh, for me, very, very interesting was this uh, picture, this uh, model, how we can see, uh, you know, teacher education and how we can transform teacher education. And uh, I think that uh, each time when we try to uh, change teacher education, we should start from the vision as uh, Jerry indicated in his publication. So the vision of high quality teachers uh, is the basis for each of us. I mean, the policy makers, the teacher educators, researchers, teachers, uh, student teachers. And then from the vision, we can think how to design teacher education and uh, these principles of powerful teacher education for me especially were very important. But what I uh, found uh, different maybe in European and uh, American context, uh, maybe it's about, I think it's about the language because as you see in this uh, uh, model that uh, Jerry is using the concept of teacher education regarding, um, we can say, uh, initial teacher education, uh, preparation for um, teacher education. And uh, um, in our European context, when we think about the teacher education, we rather try to use, uh, use the concept of teacher education as an ongoing process 
process of professional development within the continuum of the teaching profession from initial teacher education through induction and on to continuing professional development throughout teacher career. So uh, if we would like to work together across different, let me say, uh, countries and to find the uh, to find the common ground uh, to think about the teacher education uh, from my point of view the language is very important because the language creates the um, the concept the perception so i um, gave the example that um, on the level of uh, europe european commission also has this uh, perception on teacher education as a on as an ongoing process and uh, in, in teacher education policy in Europe, scientific network, we work for a long time on the way how we can perceive teacher education, how we can support um, European countries to develop teacher education. And uh, in one of our book, Recruiting and Educating the Best Teachers, um, our main question uh, were, what does the best teacher education program uh, can look like? How should we look at the area of attracting the best teachers um, at teacher education program and the schools? And how we should look at the area of recruitment into teacher education at different stages of uh, teacher career um, and into the teaching profession. Uh, in the second volume of uh, Pepe book series, we focus on the quality in teaching and teacher education because uh, we decided that thinking about teacher education is not enough. In the center, we should put teacher, uh, we should put the um, quality teaching, we should put the issue of quality retention. Also, we tackled the issue of teacher shortages. And however, we try to think about about changing, um, uh, improving teacher education um, uh, from the, um, let me say, from this starting point, that first of all, we should focus on the positive aspects of the situation we have and to try to make uh, even, uh, let me say, stronger this uh, positive aspect. So, um, from my point of view, uh, when we think about the teacher education and uh, the way in which we would like to, uh, let me say, transform teacher education, uh, very important is the systematic approach. And even we should try to go towards synergy within the system. And in Gary's presentation, I found this very, uh, inspiring that he showed us different actors at different levels uh, and it was uh, presented uh, through the whole presentation so if you uh, if we take into account Jerry's uh, presentation he said uh, the problems associated with teacher education are multifaceted and complex and are discussed by actors at the very different levels and from my point of view it is um, it's connected with this issue, systematic approach uh, towards teacher education. And I was lucky enough uh, and I had the privilege to uh, represent teacher education uh, um, policy in Europe network at one of the UNESCO policy dialogue forum. It was 2019. And uh, at this forum, we focus on uh, teacher education, teachers' uh, competences, knowledge, teaching, uh, teaching profession as a research-based profession. And at this forum, uh, we notice that school education and teacher education ask currently for an interactive relationship between policy, research, and practice. So we have to look how to build capacity for teacher education through synergy within the system. And developing teacher education policies calls for a collaborative dialogue of teacher educators, student teachers, researchers, teachers, school heads, and school boards, as well as a policymaker at the 
regional, national and European levels. And uh, what I also would like to add to our discussion, uh, the importance of context. And this importance of context was pointed out by Jerry in his presentation. Uh, I, mm, mm, I started my uh, discussion from this uh, when I showed the Jerry's argument. And uh, what I would like to notice also that uh, when we think about the teacher education, uh, we should put in the center students and students well being and successful learning to a great extent depends on the quality teachers. And at the same time, quality teachers depend greatly on the quality of teacher education. Mm, and uh, the issue of the context uh, was uh, uh, raised by uh, Elena Ryakina and Connor Galvin, and I really recommend you this uh, chapter on uh, teacher education and the chapter title is From Global to Local, and the authors that showed us how much uh, you know, the importance of context in policy critique and uh, in thinking about the teacher education is important for us and uh, how much we should look at the issue of history, of uh, social economic uh, issue, the issue of uh, the policy of the country, the country, if we would like to change teacher education and uh, because the time is very short so we try to conclude with some um, with uh, three minutes say. left thank you very much so what i would like to mention at the end from my point of view the responsibility of policy makers uh, uh, teacher um, the responsibility of teachers uh, from the beginning of the career is connected with the issue that we should look at the mission. Uh, and uh, being a teacher means that teacher must develop a critical perspective of their role as a teacher within society. And teachers, they should have a broader view of the purposes of the education for the students. Focusing on professional learning and development is very important. The continuing professional development is essential ingredient for maintaining high quality teaching and for retaining quality teachers. And teaching profession, it was uh, indicated by Jerry, needs to be attractive, satisfying profession if we are able to recruit and retain the most effective commitment uh, teachers. A challenge is to send, from my point of view, to schools teachers who know themselves and their workplaces. The research on teacher motivation, prospective teachers' motivation, usually show us that uh, prospective teachers, the candidates for teaching profession, they don't uh, know exactly they don't and they are not aware of the realities of their workplaces and uh, finally i would like to um, point out that teachers as lifelong learners from the beginning of their career should be able to engage in different forms of teacher education and um, the, um, that enab enables them to progress their learning and development in ways that are relevant for, to their own individual needs and those of the pupils, schools and communities. So thank you very much for your time. Joanna, thank you very much that you are our critical friend uh, today and give us information about uh, the relationship between different stakeholders and what's going on perhaps in the future and what is necessary. Now I will introduce uh, uh, Jakob Kost. Jakob um, is a visiting scholar with, in the Center for the Study of Canadian and International Higher Education at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto in Canada. And he is a lecturer at Bern University of Teacher Education in Switzerland. After studying in Zurich, Berlin, Fribourg, he did his PhD on the 
permanently of the Swiss education system and related questions of social disparities in the educational transitions at the University of Fribourg. Jacobs today's research interests focus on teacher education and teacher shortage, upper secondary and higher education policy, relations between education and labor market policy and international, it's like today, comparative vocational education research. So, Jacob, thank you very much for coming. It's um, the same time, uh, it's in the morning in Canada. So you have your third coffee and now you can start. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy to be here and I'm very honored to be part of this uh, uh, impressive panel. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. So today I'm going to talk about tackling teacher shortages um, and challenges of divergent educational policy perspective. Um, so I will pick out one piece of uh, Jerry's talk. Well, I was asked to contribute as a, a member of the new generation uh, researcher, and I wasn't really <laughs> sure uh, what to do uh, with that. And so uh, my approach was, what do the cool kids do? Usually they use new technology. So I asked Chat GPT, uh, open AI, uh, what she's know she knows about teacher shortage. I'm going to comment on that and uh, do a little appreciation of uh, Cherry's approach and then go a bit uh, lower in level, but slightly more specific and um, focus on a study I did in Switzerland on actor specific construction of teacher shortage as a fundamental problem uh, in this teacher shortage debate and probably using uh, uh, Latondra's approach as a so solution for it. So um, I ask Chat GPT, so you probably know that, uh, came to public attention last November about a few geeks knew it uh, a bit earlier. Uh, it's a very potent, uh, pretty new open uh, artificial intelligence or so language-based model. Um, you can uh, ask questions or write stuff in a, in a chat-based um, dialogue field and it produces answers. So I asked uh, ChatGPT in December 6th last year, write five sentences on how to tackle teacher shortages. It took the AI about three to five seconds to produce these five sentences. So, one way to tackle teacher shortages is to increase teacher pay to make the profession more attractive. Another approach is to provide incentives such as student loan forgiveness or housing assistance to encourage people to enter the teaching profession, implementing targeted recruitment of efforts such as partnering with uh, training programs to identify and mentor promising candidates can help address shortages. Additionally, providing ongoing professional development opportunities and support to current teachers can help retain experienced educations and prevent them from leaving the profession. And finally, expanding the pool of qualified educators by offering alternative certificate programs or allowing experienced professionals from other fields to transition into teaching can help alleviate teacher shortages. So uh, this was the produced answer, as I said, in about five seconds. And what we see here is, um, I think pretty interesting because we can use uh, this uh, automatically generated answer to a certain degree as a picture of the public discourse we observe around uh, teacher shortages. And we see uh, very different approaches that could be taken. So on the one hand, we have this teacher pay increasing. On the other hand, we have recruitment questions, professional development aspects, all uh, alternative certificate programs. So a huge variety of, um, of perspectives and ways to tackle teacher shortages on the one hand. And on the other hand, I would argue that they represent to a certain degree also very different perspectives on what's the underlying problem of teacher shortage. So when reflecting on the answer uh, on this uh, uh, AI answer, we can say, well, it's not bad at all. Uh, if you would have a, a bachelor student answering uh, a test questions with these five aspects, we would say, well, it's a pretty good answer. On the other hand, we see that the key arguments that Jerry made in this talk are not at all taken into account 
that's not surprising because the model was trained only until 2021 and uh, Sarah's ideas are newer, but we need that they don't take into account the need for a coherent policy linkage, as he described it. We see that it barely takes into account collaboration and coordination of stakeholders, and all the measures we saw were very closely holding to the notion of a educational reform as a solution for teacher shortage and not so much focusing on the idea of a catalyst for transformation. And so I would argue that these countermeasures, now uh, generated through an AI, but also uh, similar measures we uh, observe in the public discourse, are based on pretty divergent understandings of the underlying causes and options for action. And if you look at selected research, and that's really just, you know, about teacher shortage, there's a huge body of literature about, it, but just a few insights. So there is pretty much research on intervention regarding promotion of attractiveness um, of the profession, relief measures for teachers, such as mm -hmm. teaching assistance, for instance, effect on financial measures, uh, pay increase, etc. We have research on increasing the number of study places and whether this affects a shortage. Um, we have impact of lateral and side entry programs, this here from Switzerland, but we also, you also did a lot in, in uh, um, Dresden on this topic. And we also know quite something about the historical trends in Germany, in Switzerland, in other countries about the relationship between supply and demand for teaching, uh, about cyclical fluctuations between demand uh, and supply, and also about the effect that we sometimes can observe that certain policy governing attempts lead to pro-cyclical measures, so to an increase in the fluctuation between demand, uh, between uh, shortage and uh, unemployment of teachers. So my point is, I don't think the problem is that we have too few ideas of what to do. I really think, and this is also what Terry pointed out, the problem is that we do not agree. We do not agree either in the diagnosis where exactly which problem is, nor in whether, where, or how we could or should intervene in this whole system. And so my approach was um, to focus on the analysis of this problem construction that are underlying uh, in the involved actors. Um, I did a study in Switzerland in two cantons, so two federal states for Germany, and uh, we focused on uh, the three main stakeholders, uh, the ministries of education or departments, uh, the cantonal teacher association, and also the universities of teacher education. And we did um, a discourse analysis focusing on legislative reports, government policy guidelines, annual reports of the actors, revisions of law, et cetera, et cetera. And in addition, we did interviews with leaders from these three main stakeholders. And um, I just will give you two um, short slides on some of the results. So when we talk to the leaders and did interviews and analyze them, we see that the leaders in this three institutions have hugely different uh, ideas of what's the problem of teacher shortage. So a head of an educational ministry, ministry said, uh, teacher shortage cannot be tackled, at best it can be administered. So he doesn't think that there is a lot of power at the ministry to tackle teacher shortage at all. In another ministry, um, when discussing whether uh, how they develop reports in working groups on teacher shortage and what kind of measures they put in the reports or not. Uh, political opportunism was very uh, a broad topic. And uh, he referred to, a, to an older head of the department who always said, we can't put the deer in the clearing or it will be shot. So they anticipated um, political resistance and there are certain measures they didn't even discuss. From a university uh, perspective, the, uh, the ideas on teacher education and the underlying causes are way more in the direction of 
uh, quality issues such as uh, uh, the threat of the deprofessionalization or also the, the, the nightmare of the amateur teacher, so to say. And from the teacher associations, we heard a lot uh, of uh, resistance regarding supporting any kind of uh, measures that could alleviate teacher shortage. So one said, uh, if the ministry calls, we can only really promote teaching professions if the channel working conditions are appropriate. So they really focused more uh, on their union perspective. So to say. When we looked at the, what we find in the documents, then we see in all three uh, actors a very strong form of political opportunism. So in the ministries, the shortage is usually only addressed as a quantitative problem. The main problem is filling vacancies. And to communicate that this target to fill the vacancies are achieved. So the main goal is after the summer break to stand in front um, of media and say, well, all vacancies are filled now. We also see in ministries a responsabilization of others. So sometimes they say in Switzerland, part-time work as te uh, in, in teachers is uh, very common. And they said, well, teachers are responsible themselves for the, for the teacher shortage. If they would work more, there wouldn't be a shortage. And also they think that teachers are to a certain degree responsible for the image, for the poor image of um, teachers. And they say, well, if they wouldn't talk as badly about the job, it wouldn't be that first. On a universal perspective, um, the political opportunism is a bit different. A shortage is a huge opportunity for building a profile for universities. They really use shortage as a stage to present themselves uh, and their services as the solution to the problem. And they use, as I said, the amateur teacher as the, the common threat uh, they want to prevent the society from. And on the associations or union level, we see uh, the uh, political opportunism is very strongly uh, supporting their, their position in negotiation um, with the ministries in regard to um, working conditions. And also association usually criticize more or less all of the uh, measures presented by the ministries or by the universities that uh, everything is viewed from a perspective of a burden. So that was a very quick ride through some of my ideas. I think the basic problem in teacher shortage debate are very well illustrated uh, by Cherry Litomber's presentation. And uh, as I said, the problem is rarely too few measures for the lack of coherence and cooperation in educational policy. And my approach um, is more on a discourse analytical examination of relevant uh, governance documents and interviews with leaders to reveal the hidden construction of teacher shortage by these different actors. And I think what's really interesting is uh, using the notion of a contrast um, idea uh, catalyst for transformation. I think it really opens up a new perspective that potentially holds the possibility for all stakeholders to discuss the understanding of qualitatively outstanding teacher education and qualitatively outstanding schools, and just to look at the issue from a new angle, whether it is with ISTEP or uh, with another uh, with another impulse for uh, a catalyst. So thank you very much, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to the discussion.